Stall Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another EC Henry video. So it's been a while since we've done one of these. Uh, he does the video on different uh, ships from different sci-fi series. And this one is the Skip Ray 2.0, the dreaded Imperial Blast Boat. Fan lore. So, uh, the, the fan lore is, okay, the Skip... Skip Ray Blast Boat is a fan favorite ship from the old Star Wars Expanded Universe. Today I'm exploring my fan made ship, the Empire's Cunning. Okay, so this is his version of the ship. Okay, so the 2.0. So that's interesting. I don't know if he made a mod uh, for some game that has this in it or something, but regardless, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Your vessel is operating with any illegal transponder. Lower your shields and prepare for inspection. Looks like he's running. Charge weapons. The Skip Ray Blast Boat is undeniably one of the more recognizable designs in the old Expanded Universe. It's got a mean combat helicopter sort of vibe with an iconic rotating wing feature. And overall, it's really just a neat, well-balanced ship that's neither too small nor too large. I can see why this ship is so popular. But something that never quite sat right with me was how this ship was meant to be Imperial. Well, I suppose the ship is meant to date back to before the Clone Wars, where I can much more easily understand why it doesn't share anything in common with TIE Fighters and Lambda Shuttles, despite sharing a common manufacturer. You can get away with a lot when you're talking about a totally different era of design, but in the lore, the Skip Ray Blast Boat was meant to see continued service in the Imperial Starfleet, and I'm not so sure about that. Now, don't get me wrong, the Empire could continue using old Clone Wars era designs. There's nothing particularly unrealistic or implausible about that, especially in comparison to real world militaries that use vehicle. Yeah, I was about to say, like, we still use the B-52, despite the fact that it was made back in the 50s. Uh, and, and some countries, like, look at Russia, they use, you know, they, they're now currently using pre-World War II stuff in their conflict in the in Ukraine, right? So it's it's not out of the, the imagination, uh... You know, out of the realm of possibility, especially in a fictional universe, to use stuff that's, you know, very old designs for many decades, but I don't know that we ought to apply that logic to the Empire. The Empire that we see in the original saga has certain principles of visual design. They have a unified look and a preference for more cutting-edge vehicles. It would seem that the Empire was throwing out countless completely viable designs from the Republic simply to replace them with specifically Imperial designs. That is, if they replaced them at all. So to me, it seems more plausible that if the Empire wanted to continue employing a vessel like the Skip Ray Blast boat, they would use a new design, even if it was clearly patterned on the old version. So that's the context behind the inspiration for my so-called Imperial Blast Boat. I started this journey with a simple drawing where I made sure to include certain recognizable elements from both the Lambda Shuttle and the TIE Line, but as I started modeling the ship in three dimensions, I would end up making a lot of changes. My initial plan was to create a very unified, sort of monolithic and aggressively pointed design. But as I developed the shapes, I would actually soften the nose quite a bit, which brought it more in line with the Lambda's softened edges and also with the original Skip Ray's more rounded nose as well. Furthermore, comparing the ship with the TIE Interceptor it made it clear that longer and more aggressively pointed wing panels were just the right thing to add to bring in a little bit of that forward-oriented danger that I had originally been attempting to achieve with the pointed nose. As I worked on the underside, I ended up with a lot of negative space that seemed like a prime opportunity to move the turret off the dorsal side and into this concave space, which balanced out the overall shape a lot better in my opinion. The original turret location would now be a great place for a dorsal airlock. As I finalized the shapes, it really just came down to fleshing out and refining the details until, finally, the Imperial Blast Boat had fully materialized. Now, more so than usual for this particular ship, I was thinking pretty hard during the whole design process about what each and every detail was and about what sorts of roles the ship would best take on given what we know about the Empire and the existing ships in the Imperial fleet. So I've actually got quite a bit of lore that I can dive into. 
This is the Cyanar GAT-18 Imperial Blast Boat, the successor to the venerated GAT-12 Skipray Blast Boat. This new version would be exclusively produced for the Galactic Empire and designed to the same engineering standards of Cyanar's other Imperial vessels, like the TIE Fighter and the Lambda Shuttle. The motivation to produce this vessel came when the designers at Cyanar Fleet Systems identified a rebel- I don't know what it is about floating pillars, but I just think they look so badass. Like, it's probably one of, like, the most useless designs when you think of it. I mean, I guess you can move them around in theory, but it just looks cool. ...lack of focus on intermediate-sized ships in the Imperial Starfleet, which relied heavily on swarm fighters and on capital ships with very little in between. While reviewing past ships produced by the company, Cyanar designers considered the Skipray Blast Boat. Despite being popular during the height of the Clone Wars, the ship was really only a popular choice for mercenaries and planetary militias and saw fairly limited military deployment during the war. The Skipray was known for its ability to engage a wide variety of targets, but the Navy of the Galactic Republic had a fairly nuanced approach to fleet building with a healthy spread of ships of various sizes and roles, and there simply wasn't a strong demand for such an expensive and independent ship. But the combat profile of the Skipray would be perfect to fill the identified gaps in the Imperial Starfleet, so Cyanar engineers got to work updating this design for the Galactic Empire. The Imperial Blast Boat would draw heavily from what made the original Skipray Blast Boat so unique. It would be equipped with the largest possible reactor, taking up a relatively enormous share of the ship's internal volume, but allowing the vessel to be equipped with disproportionately powerful shields and weapons. The Imperial Blast Boat essentially needed to match anything from fighters to frigates, so it couldn't be an ordinary gunship. It almost needed to rival a proper corvette in terms of firepower and survivability. Consequently, the Imperial Blast Boat would be equipped not only with laser cannons, blasters, and ordnance launchers for concussion missiles and torpedoes, but would also have ion cannons and even a proper turbolaser. This XV-7 turbolaser was technically the smallest weapon that the Empire still classified as a turbolaser, but it was still the sort of heavy weapon that would normally never be found on a ship as small as the Imperial Blast Boat. This capital-grade weapon, in cooperation with its powerful ion cannons, gave this vessel the ability to engage targets much larger than itself or make very short work of vessels of similar size. But despite these powerful weapons, most of the Blast Boat's weaponry was heavily forward-focused, which made the the one thing I find really interesting about so many of the Star Wars ships, I know it's just aesthetic design, uh, but it is, and this is not specific to Star Wars either, you see this with so many different uh, uh, sci-fi series, is how they're like very aerodynamic, which makes no sense in space. It, but So, uh, I should phrase this, they're very aerodynamic in certain areas, which makes no sense in space, because there's no need for aerodynamics in space, right? You, you There's nothing there, you don't have to worry about, you know, air. But then they're very unaerodynamic in, in certain areas, which means that if, you, if you're having a ship that should be going between space and, you know, uh, in the atmosphere, then it becomes, like, massively problematic, right? So, it, like, I understand that, like, the a lot of it's just aesthetic choice, right? They just want to make something that looks cool. They don't really think through how this will actually function in the real world. Um, but it, it is so funny to me how, like... They'll have, like, these random aerodynamic things to... I think it's just to make it look, like, fancy and high-tech um, that really are useless unless it was, you know, going into the atmosphere, but then other things make it completely useless if it was in the atmosphere. The vessel's somewhat vulnerable to multi-directional attacks. This could be easily solved by deploying the blast boat in pairs, as was recommended, but they more frequently operated alone. And while the Imperial Blast Boat was well-armed and well-shielded, what had granted it exceptional abilities in the first place, its oversized reactor, could be something of a liability in prolonged combat. The power requirements were enormous, and the reactor was finicky and required continuous maintenance, and in the rare chance that the ship was legitimately outclassed in combat, the Blast Boat was considered very temperamental if it sustained basically any damage to its power systems. Consequently, it was important that the Imperial Blast Boat was equipped with a spaceship and well-armored escape pod system designed directly into the cockpit to allow the crew a rapid escape in the few precious moments between critical failure and total destruction. On balance, the Imperial Blast Boat was considered a highly capable vessel that fairly effectively filled the gap in the Starfleet that it was intended to fill. But by the time that the Blast Boat was introduced, Imperial commanders had already been trained on and acclimated to the use of large capital ships and swarms of small fighters, and they were hesitant 
to adopt a ship like the Imperial Blast Boat, with its unfamiliar loadout and combat profile. Consequently, these ships would find very little use in the Imperial Navy, but Imperial Customs Enforcement was another matter. In this particular avenue, the Empire was struggling to police the thousands of hyperlanes and backwater systems frequented by the galaxy's smugglers and pirates. Short-range fighters certainly couldn't accomplish this, and enormous capital ships were better used elsewhere. Consequently, the Imperial Office of Customs was largely reliant on older or less than ideal ships for the job. The Imperial Blast Boat perfectly solved the problems that Imperial Customs was facing. The ship was combat capable enough to engage virtually anything that Customs Enforcement could be expected to face, from illegally armed light freighters all the way to pirate corvettes. Its only limitation in this role was that its low crew complement would be frequently outnumbered during boarding action. Taking prisoners and securing contraband would be a routine part of the job, and the Blast Boat's crew of four simply wasn't up to the task. That's why the Imperial Blast Boat carried a detachment of specialized combat drones, which, while not particularly powerful or well-armored, were generally more than enough deterrent against the sorts of unprofessional resistance they were expected to encounter. Altogether, the Imperial Blast Boat was a formidable ship, and effectively fulfilled a thankless role in situations where larger ships lacked the versatility and smaller ships lacked the necessary endurance and firepower. But as the Imperial Blast Boat generally operated far from the front lines, it never really earned a reputation worthy of its abilities. Nevertheless, it was a feared sight for those it was hunting, and it was often the last thing a smuggler ever saw. So that's just a little exploration of what an Imperial Blast Boat might look like. I'd like to give special thanks to Ryan Fletcher, who provided the awesome animations in the intro, and to Robert Rose, who modeled and rendered the excellent replica of the original Skip Ray Blast Boat design in this video, and of course to Angelos Cardarinus, who rendered all the scenes of my Imperial Blast Boat for this video. I couldn't do these videos without these amazing artists helping me out, and I'd like to thank you all too for watching and staying to the end, and I hope to see you next time. Huh. Yeah, that's really interesting. So uh, I don't know if you put anything in this or, or sorry, put this in anything uh, in terms of like, it, it does, has he put it as like a, a mod in something or is this just um, just something that he like did kind of as like a, a thought project? Either way, it looks really cool. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.